All right, so purpose of this lab is twofold. First off, to investigate how the microscope works. And we talked a little bit about that the other day. Okay, We talked about how that's related to how light passes through lenses. Right? We talked about how um, if you have like a, a lens like this, right, and your specimen is over here, okay, let's just say that your specimen looks like that, okay, then okay, the light will go to the lens and it will be bent by the lens, okay, and its path will change, not the one through the center, okay, and it'll do this, right, and then the specimen will end up looking bigger. It'll also end up looking a couple of other things, but mostly bigger, okay, um, and that's what we're going to be investigating today is, is that actually what happens? Okay, um, to stuff in a microscope or to light in a microscope in order to make things look bigger. All right, so problem we're investigating. How does a microscope allow us to see tiny specimens? Spoiler alert, I may have just done that. Okay, design, manipulated responding controlled variables. Here's how this lab's going to work. You are going to have four different specimens that you are going to look at. Right. The first specimen you are going to look at is that you are going to cut a letter E out of a newspaper article and make a wet mount of it. I'll tell you how to do that okay, in just a few minutes. And you're going to look at that letter E under the microscope. The point of looking at the letter E is we'll know if its orientation changes as a result of being magnified because we know what a letter E is supposed to look like. If I look at an amoeba underneath the microscope, I don't know whether it's upside down, backwards, flip, whatever, because I don't know what an amoeba looked like in the first place. Okay, so um, it's, we're gonna use the letter E basically to tell us about the path of light through the microscope. All right? then we're gonna look at an amoeba. Okay, an amoeba is a single celled protist, okay? a little organism that lives in scummy water. Um, most of the time they just eat kind of detritus, that would be just organic material that happens to be around. They're not predaceous or anything like that. Um, there is one parasitic form of it that can cause dysentery. You wanna know what dysentery is? Uh, well, no, that's giardiasis actually, it's beaver fever. Uh, somewhat similar symptoms, although um, like dysentery is actually the leading cause of death of children worldwide, um, is it leads to basically uncontrollable diarrhea and then dehydration. Um, so it's, it's pretty bad and you can get it from drinking impure water um, and these amoebas that would then be in it in the same way that you can get beaver fever or giardiasis if you drink water around here that has giardia in it, okay, um, it causes actually like lesions and stuff on the inside of your intestines, very bad, very painful. And you sometimes even end up having to have sections of your bowel resected okay, um, from the infection. So yeah, it's pretty bad stuff. We're not looking at those. Okay, we're just looking at amoebas. Okay, um, and then we're gonna look at a paramecium, also an organism that tends to live in scummy water. Okay, um, it doesn't really hurt anybody, uh, but it's very, it can move. We're, the ones we're looking at are preserved, so they don't move, uh, which is good because if you're looking at the live ones, you actually have to put glycerin in. It's got about the consistency of maple syrup in order to slow them down enough to see them because they're so fast. Uh, so we'll look at those, and then we'll look at, lastly, a euglena. Okay, and a euglena is another uh, protist. Okay, it's a small or single-celled organism. It's quite a bit smaller than the other things we're looking at. So we want to look at it last so that we've kind of gained some experience with uh, viewing things. I'll show you kind of what they look like here. So each time we look through the microscope, we're going to be looking at something different, right? And the reason is, I mean, we kind of need to see if the microscope affects everything the same way. We need to know if, if you know how a microscope work works applies to everything, including the letter E. All right. Um, when we look through the microscope, what are we going to see? Things, hopefully, big things in large. Well, small things in large, but yeah. Okay. Uh, I would say that's probably responding to the fact that when we look at something different, I might see something different. Okay. The appearance of the things would I would say be the responding variable since that's how we're going to determine how a microscope works is by looking at how do these things look when I look at them through the microscope. Okay. Um, controlled variables, okay? Anything that's gonna remain the same each time you look through the microscope. Don't overthink that one. You need three of those, each explained. All five variables need to be explained, okay? I've kind of given you the first two already, okay? Um, but okay, you need three controlled variables, three things that will remain the same, okay, that could affect how things look through the microscope. 
Okay, so when you get in there, you, those might be a little more clear once you start working with the microscope, okay, but you need three. All right, for our hypothesis, what three words go in a hypothesis? If, and, and then. All right, since this lab is about how a microscope works, should the if part tell me how a microscope works? Yes. yes. Okay, so the if part should talk about how the microscope works. Remember, level of detail. If a microscope makes things bigger, is not very detailed. Okay, you need to tell me how it does that. All right, the and part, as always, talks about the experiment itself. It's a brief summary. We're looking at different specimens under the microscope. Okay, the then part. needs to talk about the appearance of the specimens. And I would include things like size and orientation in my description of the appearance of things under the microscope. All right, so the procedure here, pretty straightforward. Okay, we're going to um, get a microscope. I've left that cupboard open, all right, so you can find the microscopes quickly. Okay, um, how many slides do you need to take back to your desk at one time? One, you can only look at one at a time, so only take one back there. They're really easy to knock off the tables, and when they get knocked off the tables, they break. So please only take the one you're actively looking at. We are going to do the uh, observations in this order. Letter E, number one, okay? Amoeba, number two, paramecium, number three, and euglena last, okay? Make sure that we do them in that order because they do get progressively more difficult and smaller, and as a result, you need a little more experience each time. Okay, um, so you're going to make a wet mount of the letter E. That's the first thing you're going to do. So for a wet mount, this is what we do. So you're going to have a blank slide, which is a rectangular piece of glass. Okay, You are going to cut a letter E out of an article, not a headline, Okay, out of an article, and you are going to put that cut piece of paper in the middle of your slide so that the letter E is right side up. Then you're gonna take a drop of water and drop it onto the letter E. What I would advise is, if this marker is the eyedropper, put the eyedropper right on the letter E and squeeze, okay? If you don't, the letter E will just flip over when the water gets on there, okay? You wanna kind of soak the letter E so it sticks to the slide, okay? Why is it gonna to stick to the slide? All right, water's a polar molecule, remember that. Okay, um, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna wet the letter E. Once it's kind of stuck, then I can put a bit more water on there. I don't wanna have too much. If I'm looking at it from the side, okay, so here's kind of the side view of the microscope slide, right? I should just see kind of a, you know, small bubble of water on there. Then you're going to take a cover slip. And cover slips are small square pieces of transparent plastic, okay? And what you do is you set them on the slide at an angle like this. And then you just drop them so that they fall down onto the water and the letter E and kind of the water will squish to the sides and that thing will stick, okay? It sticks for the same reason the letter E will stick, okay? Um, so when you, you can do this, you can turn it upside down, it won't come off, okay? Polar nature of water is awesome. So, okay, um, we're gonna have that, okay? And it'll just stick on there. Now you have your wet mount. What you should see at that point is, okay, this. Microscope slide, okay, cover slip, letter E under the cover slip, right, with, um, with the water underneath that. The reason for using the cover slip is it protects the microscope from the water, right? We don't want to get gunk on the microscope, um, so that's why we use that, right? So that's how you make the wet mount of the letter E. The other slides are already prepared. You won't have to use water. You just grab them and put them in the microscope, I think they're, they're a bit easier, All right? So that's how you make the letter E. Everybody good with that? All right, so um, 
remember how we estimate the size of an object, because that's something you're going to need to um, kind of make an estimate of when you do your drawing. So um, you're going to, we know that the, we know the fields of view from yesterday. Okay, we know that the scanning power, okay, is 4,000 micrometers. And that's the one you'll use for the letter E. If you go any higher, if you go to the low power lens, you won't see all of the E. Okay, it'll blow it up too much. So take your picture on the scanning power for the letter E. Everything else, you're going to take the picture most likely on the high power lens. Okay, the amoeba may be on the low depending on how your how it looks when you look at it both ways. Okay, um, remember that the low power lens okay is 1600 micrometers. Okay, you might you might use that for the amoeba. Okay, and then the high power you'll use for the paramecium and the euglena. Okay, remember that it's 400 micrometers across. All right, so we just make an estimate of how big things are. When you are making that estimate, use the longest dimension of the organism or object. Okay, and I say that because the paramecium is elongated. It is much longer than it is wide. Okay, so make sure you do your measurement along the longest direction. All right. Um, so with the, the lab diagrams, okay, I'm going to go over that. I'm going to come back to the lab diagrams in a minute. But for each specimen, take your phone, put it against the eyepiece, okay, and get yourself a good picture of the organism that way. It's the first couple times is going to be tough because you got to turn, you got to find out exactly where you have to have your phone. Most of the time, it's right against the eyepiece. Okay, that's where you're going to get the best uh, shot of it. Okay, but use your phone to get a good picture, um, and then you can, you know, share it between your group members. If somebody gets a better picture than everybody else, okay, then uh, just share it. Now, when we're making a lab diagram, okay, some of the conventions of a lab diagram are that your name and the date are always, and for each diagram, in the top right-hand corner. Okay. Each diagram takes up one full page. Okay. You should not have more than one specimen on a page. So when your lab report gets submitted to me electronically, okay, each lab diagram should be one full page in the report, and it should look like this, except it'll be a real picture. Okay, so your name and the date will be here. Okay, all of that. Then you make the uh, the specimen itself, the picture, take up as much room as you can, make it as big as possible. Okay, without it being too grainy. Um, and then you're you're going to label it. Now, for this lab, because it's not going to be due till after we've talked about what the, all the structures are, but I'm not really worried about the labels being correct, as I am worried about the format being correct. Okay, so the format is. All labels are horizontal lines to the same side of the diagram. Okay, because I sometimes see people and they do this. So here's their here's their lab drawing. Here's their their specimen, and they've got it looks like the thing exploded. All right, because they got labels going to everywhere. And it's really messy. Okay, all labels should go to one side. Okay, so you may have to adjust your picture over a little bit to one side. Okay, all right. Um, if for uh, some reason you can't, like you've got two structures that are kind of right on top of each other, you can go diagonally and then over, but they should all end in a horizontal line to one side, all right? Just like I've done there. Okay, here's the weird thing about lab diagrams. Where does the title usually go? At the top, not on a lab diagram. The title goes on the bottom. Underneath the diagram is where the title goes, so that's the plant cell. Okay. Uh, and then I also write the magnification, and then I write the size. So that's my size estimate there, 100 micrometers. Right? All that information ends up on your lab diagram. Okay. okay, and we just talked about that a minute ago, and we talked about that already. Okay, here are the three organisms you're going to look at. Okay, This pinkish purple blob is the amoeba. Um, most of the time they're going to be pinkish purple, but there's a couple of slides where they must have used a slightly different stain and they're a little blue. They're a little bit bluish. Okay? Um, if they look like a blob, it's an amoeba. 
okay? Amoebas are all blobs, okay? And their shape always changes because that's how they move, okay? They, they just change the shape of their cell and they're just, they're a blob, okay? Um, and they just, yeah, so that's what they'll look like, okay? And you'll be able to see things, you know, like a nucleus. And if you can see the outside of the cell, you can see the cell membrane and, and things like that that we've talked about, okay? Uh, just do your best to kind of figure out what things are. This is a paramecium. The paramecium that you look at will not be colored like this. They are, they are gonna be colored pink, blue, purple, and maybe even occasionally brown. Right? It depends on which slide you get, and it depends on the gender of the paramecium. They don't necessarily have a male and female. They actually have many different, and they stain differently. It's weird, okay? Yeah, um, but they actually, when they reproduce, they don't just split in half. They will conjugate, that is, they'll get together, okay? And they will exchange these little tiny micronuclei, okay? Which is a little nucleus that they make for reproduction. And they exchange that with another paramecium. And that allows them to, when they divide, not be an exact copy of what they were before. It makes more variation in the species, okay? And then this is the euglena. This is way bigger than it's gonna look for you, okay? The euglena is tiny. On the scanning power lens, the euglena will be little tiny blue slivers, faded blue slivers. They're almost impossible to see on scanning power, okay? On high power, okay, they'll look kind of like a small paramecium, except, and it's even hard to see this blown up, they have a flagellum. They have that long whip-like tail like a sperm has. All right, that's how they move around. Interesting thing about the euglena is it's also photosynthetic. So it can move, but it doesn't eat. It uses photosynthesis. So if it gets hungry, it just swims towards the light, which would be pretty handy. Oh, I'm hungry. I'll just go stand in the sun for a while, okay. which would be fine in the summertime. But in the wintertime, when there's only six hours of sunlight, it'd be a little worse. But, okay. So um, that's the three organisms you're going to look at. And then obviously also the letter E. Okay. So just so you know kind of what to look for when you get there. Okay, let's look at how the lab drawings are going to work. So I assume you're all in your lab reports right now, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I will open up mine and walk you through it here. Okay, so um, so it says here, in observation, see lab drawings on following pages. So I'm just gonna kind of make a new page here. Uh, I'm just gonna go here. All right, so to make a lab drawing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to insert. Okay, and you're gonna go to drawing, right? And you're going to make a new drawing here. All right, so what it does is it opens up Google Drawings, which is not Photoshop by any stretch of the imagination, but it's going to do the job we need it to do. Okay, so at this point, you guys probably won't be able to do much more, but I'm going to walk you through the rest of it here. Okay, you will have your the pictures that you take with your phone at this point. Okay, you need to save those or send them, sorry, to your Google Drive, to your school Google Drive. I can show you how to do that later. Okay, so I'm just going to insert an image here. Okay. Um, No, I don't remember where I put it. Maybe in my pictures. Nope. Now I've got what I need. Okay, so we're gonna go, and I'm just gonna put in a picture of an amoeba that I took. So there you go, I, it put the amoeba in. Now, right now, I don't really like that orientation because that's gonna be hard for me to make the labels. So I'm just gonna grab that dot at the top and flip it, and then I'm gonna move it over here. Okay, so now I can put all the text I need over here. That would be all the labels and, and that kind of stuff, 
All right, so um, do I have room underneath this? I don't. So I'm just going to shrink it a little bit. Come on. Just so I've got room to put in my title and stuff. OK, uh, so now I'm going to add in a text box. OK, text box just is exactly what it sounds like. It allows me to put text in a box. Okay, and so I'm going to put on there my name and the date. Okay, it's in the top right hand corner where it's supposed to be. All right, then I'm going to put in some lines. These are going to be my labels. All right, so I'm going to label this thing because it's kind of obvious. All right, and I want to make that line as straight as I can, something like that. All right, and then I will put a text box on the end of that and write what that is. Okay, then I'll put another one on here. Okay, bring it over, and that'll be a vacuole. Okay, the food vacuole, actually, I should probably be specific. All right, and so on and so on. Everyone follow on that? Okay, they're not hard to do. Okay, you just put the picture in, draw lines, put text boxes on the end of the lines, and you've got your labels. Okay, way better than having to draw it by hand. Uh, now, next thing I'm going to do is put in my name and date here at the bottom. And, or sorry, not my name and date, the title. So this will be Amoeba. And it's on high power, so 400x. And it'll be, I don't know, about 250 micrometers or something. All right, so there we go. Now I can just um, save and close. Okay, When I save and close, it'll insert that into my lab report. Oh, it cut off the thing at the bottom. If that happens, if anything gets cut off, you can just put it in in Google Docs after. Okay, but your labels and stuff won't get cut off. So that's the really important part there. Okay, questions on how that works? Okay, so that's how you do your lab drawings. Okay, really easy, and you'll be able to use your pictures for it. Okay. All right. Now, for the uh, analysis stuff, we'll just quickly talk about that as well, even though we probably won't get to that today. Um, Okay, so you'll have your lab drawings and then you'll have your analysis. Okay, there's three analysis questions. Okay, uh, question number one, using what you saw under the microscope, specifically the size, the orientation, and the general characteristics of the specimens you looked at, especially the letter E. Okay, explain what you think happened to enlarge the specimens. Okay, so you're explaining why the specimens look the way they do and how that means the microscope worked. Okay. Question number two, describe and explain the steps you took to find and focus your paramecium. All right. Just walk me through it. Like I went and got the slides and then I put the slide under the microscope and then I did this and then I did that and so on and so on. Just walk me through a point form. Okay. And then question number three, why did we add water to the wet mount? What did it do? Okay. Explain why we did that um, for the, the slide that we made of the letter E. All right, for your conclusion, remember to copy and paste your hypothesis, explain using especially your answer to question number one, why you can accept or reject it, and then uh, any sources of error. I will give you one. Inexperience. You have probably not used a microscope very much, and as a result, that will make your life a bit difficult. All right, um, you'll have to come up with a second source of error. Okay? I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find one as we go along.